Hello, everyone. Welcome. Uh, welcome to the Yorkshire Sound Women Network's uh, Level Up in Audio seminar series. Can everyone hear me okay? Well, thumb up, thumbs up. Yes, brilliant. Um, so I'm delighted to be back. Um, my name's Jess, I'm hosting the, the second event today um, of the series with our guest, Kelly Jane Jones. Um, so this event uh, with the Yorkshire Sound Women Network features uh, musical artists and audio professionals presenting their projects, ideas and experiences and, and sharing them with us all. Um, just a few things to note before we start. Um, just to say, please refrain from taking any screenshots um, or recordings because we are recording the session now um, and it will be available online on the website uh, at a later date. Um, if you wish to remain anonymous in the call, um, that's fine, you can turn your video off. Um, or if you, you want to have your video on and then you want to not be uh, seen when we then put the session online, just get in contact with one of us and, and we can make that happen, that's fine. And lastly, I think, yep, you're all on mute at the moment, but yeah, please just stay on mute so we don't have any background noise. Um, there will be a chance for questions um, at the end. We're going to have a, a Q&A discussion session. Um, but if you have any burning questions um, throughout and you really want to ask something, um, if you could just raise your hand um, and I will look out and I'll spot you and then you can have a chance to answer, uh, uh, ask a question. Um, but if you have a question and you're worried you're going to forget it, uh, I would suggest just put it in the chat section and we'll get back to you um, when we then have our question and answer section. Um, that is that. When we have our question and answer section, please feel free to unmute yourself um, and ask a question um, or raise your hand. Um, I know it's quite daunting to speak out, but um, yeah, we, we encourage that as well. So a quick note about the structure of the session. Um, Kelly's going to do a presentation uh, about her work and her visions, including uh, bits about her recent projects and collaborations. This will then be followed by uh, a, a space for any questions and discussions. And then um, we're gonna have a 10 minute kind of meditation relaxation section at the end, uh, which Kelly's gonna tell us a bit more about. Uh, so just a bit of background about Kelly. Uh, she's a Manchester based artist uh, who brings together the world of electronics and sound processing with elements from the natural world, acoustic instruments and other various um, performance art. She experiments with uh, modern and, and, oh, and ancient rituals and observes how they can enable us to connect with ourselves, uh, with others and with the planet in a meaningful way. Uh, Kelly began in the genre of DIY experimental music concrete um, and has gone on to develop her performance to include other art mediums such as dance and film. And through the use of uh, contact mics, Kelly explores geology as a source of sound, which I'm fascinated by and I can't wait to hear more about um, unearthing sounds from objects that we perceive as solid or static like rocks and crystals. Uh, so through the creation of a, a rich and expansive sound world, uh, Kelly aims to create a highly sensory experience for the listener and for the audience. Um, and these musical and sensory experiences provide uh, possible conditions for change. So an environment in which um, our unconscious may come to light and parts of ourselves may emerge and unravel. Um, so the performance space being a, a potential container for these parts of the unconscious to emerge and be held. I'm sure she's gonna speak about that a little bit more. Uh, so without further ado, I'm gonna please hand over to Kelly. Um, and yeah, I'm super excited. Thank you so much, Jess. Like. I think you should give the presentation like that was just that was yeah thank you so much um that that's kind of it <laughs> that's it <laughs> um cool uh thank you so much everyone for showing up um tonight uh I can see some faces that I know some names that I know um and haven't met so really nice um really touched that you could make it uh, so what I'll probably do is just like go through a presentation of some things, some projects, um, a bit about my approach and also probably just a bit about my history and kind of where I've come from, just because I feel like it informs what I do. Um, 
if you want to interject at any time, do just like raise your hand. Um, and as Jess said, she'll like try and pick that up. If not, like if you have anything that comes to mind during the presentation, just write that in the chat. Um, so I'll do that for, uh, yeah, I, I don't want to just, just for it to be lots of streaming of information towards you. So if you do want to kind of engage and like have a kind of a converse, but you know, while I'm speaking, do, don't hesitate. Um, and then at the end, we'll kind of collate those questions that you've got. And I'm, you know, we can also make that like a dynamic chat thing between all of us. And then I was just gonna end on a piece that um, I thought would be nice to do a bit of a kind of meditational thing just to end the session. It, it will be about like 11, 12 minutes long. You can put that on and then sign off or you can just put that on and then we will regroup probably just for a few minutes at the end, just to kind of check in if anyone's got any reflections. So what I'll do now actually is I'll just send you the link to download that um, piece. Uh, let me just grab the link and I'll just put that in the chat now. So if you want to download this now, ready for the end, or if you don't want to join us today, very welcome to use that at another point. There's also some text that accompanies this in preparation to kind of, you know, just very loose guidance about things that you might want to um, think about while you're doing this kind of meditational journey of sorts. I'm very happy to send that to you by email, so don't hesitate to get in touch. Okay, um, I'll just do a screen share. So, um, yeah, that's my name. <laughs> There's a little piece of obsidian rock that um, is, uh, some obsidian is a rock that I've kind of come, keep coming back to and um, I've not fully worked out what's going on with that, but it's um, definitely something very, and potent and important to me um, that I've used in quite a few performances. Um, I just want to kind of start with where my practice began, which was probably, I mean, I kind of learned flute as a teenager. I kind of struggled with connecting to um, music practices of learning, you know, like playing from scores, always had teachers that were quite unhappy and never really kind of gave me a sense of what music and musicality was. So I feel like I've had a bit of a, a windy way back into what I kind of perceive as some kind of a music connection and practice. Um, I also had quite a difficult upbringing and I just mention it just because I feel like these things are often not really talked about. And um, I was actually taken into foster care like um, in my teenage years because I, my mother was unable to look after me. Um, and I've, I've since had some diagnoses of um, complex PTSD and um, other kind of dissociative disorders. So I'm just mentioning it as like a backdrop to the fact that what I do now is not just like, um, it's not something that I've just come to in a, a way that's um, through a standard route. I feel like it's kind of been a bit of a journey. It's not always been easy. And I feel like just saying this, I, I imagine quite a few of you can probably connect with that. And it's probably not, um, it's not unusual, but maybe just that we don't always speak about it. So I was taken into foster care and taken away from my family. Um, and I feel yeah, just that it's good to be open about these kind of things to make sure that um, it's kind of clear where um, creative impetus or creative um, like desires about wanting to make things are kind of connected to our emotional worlds and not shied away from basically. So um, I just put that there as like a little backdrop, but 
so from that point, I was very lucky to kind of meet um, a really inspiring group of DIY artists, I guess, just like making and creating really for um, just the need to make things, you know, as kind of like a way to work through things, a way to explore, a way to have fun, a way to kind of experience the joy of life, um, which might be and has been kind of described as like a folk tradition of sorts. You know, it's not within a trained school, it's not within a classical music department, but um, it has validity in that it's a shared community. So I was very, very lucky to experience that um, around like the mid 2000s in Manchester. Um, met a lot of people, Sophie Cooper for one, um, a friend called Jointsy, um, people who just, we would have gigs in each other's front rooms. We um, just explored what, it was to share music together and to share collaboration together, which has really informed what I've done and has also given me the courage and kind of confidence to explore those kinds of things. Um, so from that point on, I started to collaborate with my partner at the time, who was Pascal Nichols. We formed a duo, um, which was like flute and drums essentially. Um, but then expanded into kind of processing and um, using cassettes, using contact mics, um, exploring kind of dynamics within, I guess, free improvisation, but also within a very much of a kind of experimental technique. So we would explore recording all sorts of sounds and bringing them into our practice to kind of um, see where the electronic sounds combined with the acoustic instruments plus the processing of acoustic instruments where that would take us so we had a duo for about 10 years and um, that was a really exciting time um, full of um, explorations also in collaborations with other groups in Sheffield, Glasgow, actually all across Europe and we tour on sort of like these really low key DIY circuits of squats and um, art spaces that have been not necessarily funded by governments, but really heavily supported. Um, uh, it's a very usual kind of route to do like these kind of like um, art venues that were given buildings basically given by the government to artists which is something that's very very rare now in the UK and increasingly so I think on the continent um, yeah so this um, this kind of has informed where I've kind of come from and has really informed I guess my ethos about making and creating um, and I feel very, very lucky to have met all of these people um, that have kind of contributed and I've, I've learned so, so much from them. Uh, so let's like snap forward to uh, today, which is we're in a lockdown. I hope all of you are kind of doing okay. I realize like it's a really difficult situation for, for many of us, even if we, um, each of our circumstances are incredibly unique and I feel like we're all, you know, we're all learning from this, but we're all suffering from it at the same time. And we're all trying to do our best at the same time. It's a really unique, very, very unique situation. So what I've been doing during this time is trying to make some sense of how it is that I transform or translate my practice um, to share with others. Um, I'm not, I've not really been doing very many live streams because it doesn't feel like very, you know, like I'm, I'm in my front room right now. It's not really a space that I feel like sharing, um, like a performative aspect of my work. Um, what I really value is, is having people in a space and creating a space. So what I've ended up doing actually is, um, working more on film um, and I can share this film actually with you this is a film that I've just made over the summer with a dancer Black Hain who has become like a really good friend 
um, who does a very particular kind of like cathartic, quite raw dance style. Um, and he kind of led me through some elements of uh, choreo choreography, I guess, with relating to the kind of things that I was trying to explore in this film. Uh, this is a film that accompanies a record that's just come out with uh, Cafe Otto on their ta Taku Roku series, which is a digital series that they've created to support artists during this kind of COVID crisis. And I also worked with Kevin Craig, who's someone that I've worked with before in the past. And he, I mean, just seeing his practice over the last like eight years, absolutely expand to he's just taught himself so 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 much and he's now teaching at Manchester Metropolitan University so it's been really amazing and beautiful to see him transform and grow his practice um I can also share links to his work and he's on Instagram yeah like really really super nice stuff so um here you can just see a few screenshots uh, it's like a merged footage of um, real footage that's filmed in a space in North Manchester, a green space. And we created like a CGI world to accompany. Uh, so there's also aspects of that interspersed with it. Um, and I'm very happy to share with you the record that I've made as well. So I can send you links to all of those things if you're interested. Um, just kind of stepping back a little bit um yeah something that I've been exploring is trying to create these immersive worlds to invite an audience into um I mean it's something I feel really really lucky and privileged to have been able to be asked to do this commission this was with um Huddersfield Contemporary Music Festival last year 2019 sorry 2019 2020 kind of disappeared a little bit so this is actually really over a year old and I collaborated with a friend two friends Dan Valentine and Joe Beadles Dan was mostly working with me on sound and Joe mostly with visuals and um what you can kind of see here is like objects and elements I've set up in the space um, with um, so kind of these very reflective materials, which Joe um, Beadles then kind of, we kind of came up with a, like a sequence that was connected to the sound. And then the, um, the visuals would really drastically interact with the different elements that we'd set up in this space. Um, and the idea was this kind of like um, inner like shamanic journey. I mean, I didn't really have time with the audience to really um, explain any of the concepts of the piece, but I'm kind of very interested in, um, I guess, kind of traditions that have been used across the world to kind of explore our inner spaces. And there's um, a practice using a drum a very intense kind of drum rhythm, which you, um, it, you're you usually in the presence of that person doing that. And they lead you through um, this kind of inner experience. And, and um, it's usually kind of very visual. Um, there are some recommendations about how to approach this. I didn't really, this wasn't, th these were the concepts behind the piece, but I, I really would like to extend and be able to kind of bring people into that space for probably hours and like really work with people to be able to like relax, lie down, um, interact with certain elements, get up, walk around, explore their body. Um, so maybe as a further work, but this, this piece was kind of the beginnings of trying to create at least that like audio visual aspect of that and in this performance I was using something that I returned to a lot which is like the sounds of rocks um, I've got like some of my rock collection here with me um, they're like pieces that I kind of come back to again and again and again um, yeah if you have any rocks in your room like do feel free to kind of grab them um, yeah, uh, I feel like they're kind of very grounding and 
I mean, then you get, you can get really geeky about the kind of scientific geologic kind of history about, you know, um, chemical properties and how we have learned to age, you know, give a certain age to the earth. So there's kind of like a scientific aspect, but I also feel like they're really, there's something very emotive about my connection to them. So in this piece, uh, the sounds of rocks heavily featured. And then Dan also created this kind of very intense kind of drum um, pattern and rhythm, which uh, we worked with together to kind of, um, kind of get people, I guess, kind of referencing some club culture, which I'm really, I'm really into. Like I, I go to clubs, I, I love like dancing to music, like for absolute hours on end but then also trying to connect it with like the, the real presence of the physical experience of that kind of intense, like deep sub and drum patterns. So that's a bit about that piece. Um, just a bit before I did the piece last, it was November, 2019, I was working again with building my instru own instrument using rocks and processing that sound. So um, I'm not just, uh, the, the physical aspect of the rocks is really important, um, but, uh, and also just the acoustic sound of them is really kind of, is really important to me. Like the, the acoustic possibilities for me kind of feel quite, limitless and the um, interaction with different rocks like different densities different shapes all sound really different but I also want to explore how to take it a bit further so I I amplify them through contact mics and overhead mics and then that's processed through various different elements using Ableton so this is um, a practice that I guess I've really developed over the last few years and trying to build um, an instrument that's kind of interactive physically, like it's a performative um, interaction, but it also has kind of these ASMR qualities to it because rocks like ceramics, like glass, like metal have like these qualities that I, I feel like I personally really connect with. Um, uh, a piece or a work that I absolutely love is um, Robert Ike Aubrey Lowe works with the um, sculptures of Harry Batoya, which are mostly like these incredible sculptures that are made out of metal. And I know my friend Andy Brown, she was the one that recommended ha Harry Batoya. I remember having a conversation with her about Harry Batoya quite a few years ago. And then real then discovering that Robert Ike Aubrey Lowe had actually used the sculptures, but then he processed them. So it then became a whole different kind of instrument interaction. And then he also sings with them. I'm really happy to share links to that. That record is called um, Levitation Praxis. Um, and I, I think it's just, yeah, it's like absolutely stunning. Um, yeah, I'll definitely share that link with you guys. Um, if you've not heard of it already, it's really, really amazing. So it's that kind of like combination of the physical meeting digital technologies. And that's very much been um, what I've been trying to do, I guess, um, is trying to connect up the two in a space, you know, so it becomes like something very physical. You can feel and sense the movement, the gesture with the objects, which define those movements. But then you also have these sounds that you're not, they don't quite match up with the movements that you're hearing. So there's an element of processing um, that becomes quite sci-fi or quite like quantum fiction. I'm really into the work of Wilson Harris um, who kind of creates these kind of quantum dimensions um, in a very creative poetic way. Um, and this is very much what I'm trying to explore on a kind of um, interdimensional level to try to create something, I guess, um, I mean, it's not quite the same, but Marina Abramovich 
I absolutely, I like, you know, I know she receives quite a lot of flack, but I feel like she creates these dimensions or allows space and time actually for people to kind of explore something very simple that's actually really profound. So the work that she did at the, um, I think it was in New York, it was just her sat across a table and people came in and sat and just looked at her. Um, and the amount of intense emotional reactions was was just phenomenal. Um, and, I, you know, you could kind of, she was given a lot of flack for that, you know, kind of a narcissistic work, you know, the artist is present, I think was the name of it, but there's actually something, I don't know, I feel like really undercuts um, quite a lot of experiences that when we go to an art gallery, we don't see the, we don't see or meet the artist. It's quite often given this kind of conceptual text that becomes quite meaningless and you kind of see some stuff, but I don't know, sometimes on a profound level, there's, there's some kind of emotional connection that can be missing. Anyway, so um, this idea of creating zones, um, I'm really interested in. I just feel like I've started to explore it. It's, it's nowhere near um, finished. I, I feel like there's a lot, a lot of scope and a lot of things to, to try. Not, not with just myself, but with, with, with other people as well. Um, very, very, very lucky to have worked with um, this artist, Harris Apamananda, who's been an absolute mentor and guide throughout the years, who's really, really, um, I don't think it's easy to collaborate with people, but um, there's something about her work. If you don't know her work or if you've not come across her work, um, yeah, I, I just really recommend um, seeing what she does. So this has been a really amazing ongoing a learning process where she's given me tasks or reflections, um, footage, imagery to kind of respond to. And um, I, yeah, I can't quite put words to what our, um, like our dynamic, it just feels really otherworldly. Like I feel like I've learned so, 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 so much from her. And um, yeah, I, I um yeah I, I I yeah I hope that at some point the work might be able to be shared a bit more widely because currently it's it's very much like in an installed place and it's very hard to translate that into other kind of digital contexts um, which again you know kind of goes back to my practice being very kind of performative or like you have to be in a physical space to really um, experience it. But with the COVID, it's, yeah, we're, we're all having to try and realise other ways of doing things. Uh, yeah, so I just wanted to mention that this, this, this collaboration that's really massively pushed me on, challenged me in all sorts of ways. She's really, she mentioned to me this film, The Colour of Pomegranates. I don't know if any of you know it, but it's one of, it's now like one of the game changer films for me. Um, sonically, like the way that the composer has put the film, sound to film is absolutely exquisite. And it's available on YouTube, although the quality is really quite bad. So if you could get like a high quality version of it, I'd absolutely recommend, recommend it. It's, um, yeah, uh, an Armenian Georgian filmmaker from 1968, I think. And um, yeah, so we, 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 you know, this is kind of an underpinning, I guess, kind of um, work and conversation that I've had quite a lot with Harris over the years. So really, really recommend that work. Um, okay, so some really basic kind of things that I um, really love doing is just being out and recording sounds um they then become quite transformed distorted i guess but actually being outside um i was lucky enough to do quite a few workshops with chris um what's his name from the bbc chris 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 he's absolutely amazing i've done chris what watkins 
What what is it, Abby? You on the chat? Watson. What's Chris Watson? Sorry. Um, so this this was I was with him actually um, with um, with him his absolute breadth and depth of knowledge about nature um, and also like super up for like DIY ways of making microphones uh, was inspiring. So if you're thinking about field recording, I would absolutely do one of his courses. Like it's like a couple of days. You usually go to somewhere either in Northumbria or uh, there's other ones that I think he did in um, East Anglia. Um, really good DIY techniques about how to use microphones, how to pick up sounds that you want to pick up. You know, that could be birds, wind, leaves, and just experiment bats. He had like bat recorders. Um, so, I feel like it's really amazing to go out and connect and just really listen to those environments. And this is big, a massive learning curve for me. I grew up in London, like, like inner city. I didn't, you know, I, I, I didn't really know about different types of birds and like um, rivers and I don't know, just like whole connected ecosystems that were really kind of out of my reach living in an inner city um like location um so yeah field recordings um I, this was a really nice collaboration with my friend Eleanor Cully we had a residency in a gallery and she comes from quite a different approach she's classically trained in voice and composition so it was a really nice meeting of worlds where we just had a lot of fun. Um, and I, I don't know, I mean, I don't know what a lot of your backgrounds are, but I feel like it's really important to get into a zone, get lots of different colorful things, like things that make you feel really nice. Like those balls that are on the table felt amazing. Um, and the mirrors, it, it just became like, just using different objects in a really playful way it just feels like you're kind of going back to, I don't know, some kind of, you, you're, not, you're not thinking, you're not overthinking, you're not like kind of engaging your inner critic voice. It's like, just got these cool, colorful things. I'm just gonna move them around, I'm gonna amplify some stuff. So we use like transducer mics, which made um, things become speakers. Um, we used contact mics and we used our bodies as well. So like this was a nice thing. We kind of like just explored what those gestures are with like interacting with things. And then that becomes like quite a kind of, um, I know it's maybe overused, but like a really nice, like mindful, like super present, like, you know, you have an object, like how does that make you move? Like, what does it invite? Like, what is the dynamic? And that's something that I think is really, um, I don't know, just like kind of goes back to some basics, but then adding this other element of um, digital processed elements going on at the same time. So you can see me and Eleanor there, we had some elements that you could hear the tiny squeaks of a, a cup on the mirror, but then you could also hear the amplification that we'd got this contact mic attached to a processing system that then was um, had some mic, um, some speakers around the room, which then gave this other kind of dimension of sound, which was, I guess, a bit uncanny, a little bit kind of confusing, but then also that adds into the element of performance. It, it's not just us, it's us with these objects, with these other kind of transformed Sound. So that was a lot of fun, and I think fun fun's good. Um, okay, so I am really interested in. I think ASMR. I don't know, might get a bit of a bad name, especially. I feel like some um, ASM, ASMR videos that you might have connected with, or may not have connected with, but quite often it's associated with a very kind of. Um, I don't know, I feel like a very sensual, possibly also a sexual experience from some of the videos that are available online. 
Um, and I, that, I mean, of, there's a place for that. And I, I really, you know, that's, that's absolutely fine. But I feel like if you want something that's just really very much like focused on um, uh, the objects and the sounds, um, not too much engaging with like ego or like the ego of the person giving you this presentation and video, which I feel does happen quite a lot with ASMR. Um, so I've selected a few little videos that I'd like to share, which just for me demonstrate this kind of um, experimenting with sounds. Um, and I think you don't always have to watch them as well. Like, you know, you can just turn your screen to blank and just absolutely tune in with what you're hearing. I think it's, um, again, just kind of goes back to like an awareness of your body, an awareness of um, sound. Um, for me, I was kind of mentioning at the start of the video, like, you know, kind of um, tra traumatic experiences, you know, in my childhood that these kind of things become really um, useful resources to try to connect in the present, to understand um, what's going on in the here and now rather than, you know, so it becomes a, a therapeutic tool, I guess. Um, and I feel like my practice generally has been that to, to me. Um, so I'm just going to share the videos. I'm going to share the sound. Probably just listen to like a minute and a half or so of each one. Um, if you've got any problems hearing it, just let me know and I can just send you the YouTube video on, on the chat. Okay, so let, let, here's, let's go and see. Cool. So yeah, I've just shared that link. Um, We'll just listen to a few moments um, and I'll just bring you back afterwards. Hi, cool, thanks. I'll just, um, I'll just bring you back now, if that's okay. Um, yeah. Um, there's something about this kind of laying out of things this kind of really slow exploration of the sounds, the movements, the gestures that I really, really like. Um, yeah, so I, I just thought I'd share. Um, I think maybe um, there's some other ones that I've got um, in my presentation as well. But I, yeah, I, um, yeah, there's someone else uh, at um, it, at the beach, like kind of moving in and around the rocks on the shore, which is also really, really nice. Um, and then the other one is um, actually like a very prepared kind of laid out sort of rocks. I, I'll, I'll, share, I'll, I'll share them, but I don't know if we'll have time really to listen through them now. Um, just to, I mean, I'd, I'd be happy to have your thoughts and reflections about this. I'm just very interested because I get quite an intense physical sensation to these sounds. Um, I don't know if it's necessarily the kind of classic ASMR frisson, like the frisson. I don't, uh, yeah, like I think it's a French word. I don't necessarily get that, but it's a very, I don't know, like a very, um, it's a sensation that I, I don't really, that I, I get with, I guess it's objects and objects making sound. I get, you know, like instrumentation is quite different, but there's something about the touching of objects um, that don't give you this kind of um, known sound like an instrument might do. It's a sound that you kind of gravitate towards in, in a very personal way. And I think probably all of us, I mean, we could have a whole chat about this, I guess, if we were in the same room, but like there'd be sounds that really give you a, a sensation or a memory or a, a, um, an emotional response. So that, that's kind of what I'm interested in. And for some reason it's rocks for me. I can't, I can't, I can't get away with it. It's just, yeah. Um, also the other day, 
ordered some new bowls and the bowls sound amazing. These incredible ceramic bowls are just like got water on them. And um, me and my partner were just like playing them and it just sounded, sounded amazing. Um, so like ceramic, love ceramic, glass, like, yeah. Happy to have your thoughts and reflections. And then the next thing I just wanted to kind of talk about, which I'll actually share. Um, I'm hoping it's not going to seem too much of a jump from what I've talked about before, but um, I just want to end on that. Um, so we've got this kind of connection with our history, possible traumas, our lived experience, creativity, creative practice, objects, performance, what it is to perform, what it is to share, and then kind of going into like the wider world. So I've been very much interested in this woman, Joanna Macy, who talks about um, how we, first of all, make an inner connection to ourselves um, to kind of heal ourselves in order to be able to heal the planet. And I think it's a really, she's got like a really nice kind of methodology. There's workshops that go on all the time that you can connect with online um, and, in, and in person as well. I've kind of partaken in these workshops in person with groups of people, very much to kind of understand your own, your own shit basically, your own interpersonal problems to understand I mean, this isn't new, you know, this does go back to like thinking from like the 60s and 50s and, you know, part, you know, like, and all sorts of um, other ways of thinking where you, you know, you kind of have to think inwards before you are ready to kind of think outwards and really take responsibility for how you treat others and also the planet. So um, what I'm I guess kind of passionate about is uh, like climate crisis and like how we how we kind of like how do we as humans move into our next phase of um, existence or non-existence with the planet um, because we have quite a lot to face up to I think in terms of what what we're doing how we live um, I don't want that to sound really negative. It's more of a reflective question rather than like, we need to do this, that, or the other. Like I, I don't, you know, I don't, I don't really know. But Joanna Macy um, has this nice technique where you first of all kind of think about your own um, experience, connect with your own experience. And then when you're ready, you, connect with others and then you connect in kind of group activity to connect or fight for I guess certain causes or you know protect protectors of the planet in whichever form and that's really very loose and very open and kind of very um I, I guess like there's lots of questions around it, but I just want to kind of leave, that's kind of my arc, I guess, if I'm going to leave you with an arc, it's kind of um, starting from the very personal into, you know, what is this when we perform? Like, what is this when we get together and share? Like, I don't really know, but I know that I, I'm kind of drawn to doing it and I'm drawn to like communicate and I'm drawn to like share. And then what does that mean? Like, is there, is there any way that that can connect up with um, the kind of crises that we face now on a psychological level, on a creative level? And that's very much open for like questions and debate. And, um, but I feel like these are things that also have been explored um, and there's knowledges around the world in different practices that already really know a lot of this stuff. And I feel, um, you know, I'm kind of new to this stuff, but I'm, yeah, it's all very open basically. So I'm just going to like share a bit of a screen with, let me just share this. And, um, 
is basically Joanna Macy's work. Um, and it's called The Work That Reconnects. It's a form of group work um, to try to partake in the healing of our world. Um, and she has some really, like there's lots and lots of resources online, uh, which I really hope to be able to explore with other people. I've just been, I've just partaken in workshops where other people have done that, but I'd really like to, to kind of share that. Maybe more, you know, this is more of an activist world, I guess, but I'd really like to explore this in a creative context with other people. Um, so do, 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 it's kind of connected to deep ecology. It very much focuses on your inner world about despair. Like, I mean, I don't know, possibly some of you, you know, all possibly, you know, thinking about our um, connection with the planet and maybe a bit overwhelmed about what we can and can't do. What can we take responsibility for? What, what can we not? Um, so it's very much about empowering individuals um, and groups. To uh, do, do, do this can be done alone. Um, it's designed for groups. Its effect is deeper and more enduring when experienced interactively with others. Its approach is improvisational. So I feel like it's very, it, it could really work really nicely with create, you know, like sounds, like what I was sort of talking about earlier with like objects, like I just imagine us all in a forest and kind of thinking about these things actually together. Don't know, that might sound really off the scale, but I'd be up for that. Um, do, 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 do. She goes into like conceptual thinking, systems thinking, deep ecology, Gaia theory, spiritual traditions, indigenous teachings that kind of, I don't know, they kind of go way, way beyond, I think, um, really in-depth kind of knowledge that I feel like we maybe have lost or just um, we don't quite have the vocabulary or the, the means to, to connect in the same kind of way just because a lot of us live in cities um, and have a very driven kind of lifestyle to make ends meet. Um, yeah. I mean, I can share this, I can share all of these links. Um, and there's a very particular sequence of work, which she calls the spiral, um, which is really in, empowering and really enjoyable to kind of go through. Um, yeah, so I'm a big fan of her work. Um, I think, I think I'll stop there. I think that, I hope that kind of makes sense as a kind of arc to, um, yeah, what I've been talking about. So maybe we'll, maybe we can just go for questions. Yeah, thank you so much, Kelly. That was so interesting and amazing. Brilliant, thank you. Um, Rhiannon has to go. Thank you, Rhiannon, wherever you are. Thank you, um, Rhiannon. <laughs> um, great, we've got, I'd say about just over 15 minutes for some questions, discussions, um, about uh, any of any of Kelly's works or anything she's said. Um, so I'm gonna open the floor. If anyone has any questions, please raise your hand or unmute yourself or write in the chat. Supriya says, Joanna's work resonates with the karma theory in Hinduism. Hmm. Amazing. Yeah, if you've got any links to share, Supriya, yeah, I'd, I'd, mm. I'd love to, yeah, know more. Thank you. Okay, Ryoko has a potential question. Hi. Uh, Hi. Hi, Ryoko. Hi, so good to How see you. you. <laughs> How are you? Hi. Um, just one question to push more questions. Um, you're not like you are interested in, suppose, like sensationally small objects, sounds, and sort of interaction between something that's quite tactic. And, and your senses, but then also you amplify the objects, the sounds. So the experience of your music is quite like expanding to the out world. Like sometimes it's quite large, um, um, largely amplified. So how do you balance that between 
the idea of like listening to small sounds, but then your outcome is actually quite loud. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just, yeah, I, that definitely. Um, uh, it, I feel like it depends on the space that I'm in. Quite often, there'll be quite a long, lengthy process of sound check to kind of work with the space, but it's really, um, I guess I kind of want a strong, a strong kind of experience, but that can be quite dynamic so that it can kind of go down to something very, very, very small. Um, I don't think I've quite mastered that well. Like, I feel like I've got a lot more kind of um, experimenting to do with that really, really, um, maybe through like amplification techniques, but also maybe compositional as well to like get that really, um, the small, the small sounds kind of balanced with a really loud, deep, I'm really a fan of like very deep kind of loud sounds as well. So it is, um, you think the, the experience you're having from the interaction from smaller sounds is similar to the experience your audience is having? Or do you actually translate something in between there? That's really interesting. Um, do you know, I'm I don't actually that. know. Like I feel, I mean, maybe there's more because some of the smaller sounds may not be coming across in a really strong way. They're probably stronger in a gestural way, I'd say, um, through the interaction of body and objects. But um, I do really try to kind of do the best that I can to get those small sounds like amplify because it's hard to because people aren't at the source of the sound making that I am at. So th their perspective is definitely very different, mm. but I really try to get across with the amplification, the smaller sounds through speakers um, in with various kind of layers of effects. Um, yeah, that that's really interesting, and I, I don't. I yeah, I, I I guess I just don't know really. Um, but it's really really good to ask. Um, Got a few more questions for you, Kelly, if you're ready. Um, Great. Andy, is that a raised hand you've got there? Yes. Yeah. I just was interested, Kelly. I mean, obviously, I know you personally, and and I'm very familiar with your work, but. I'm just sort of interested you haven't really sort of spoken much about your masters I'm just interested oh. in in how that has influenced your later work if at all yeah 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 thanks Andy <laughs> I did do a master's in electroacoustic composition and um uh at the University of Manchester, gone back, you know, like I didn't study music, I studied philosophy and French, like I didn't study music at all. Um, so going back to that was quite an interesting experience. And I don't know, like, I didn't, I didn't really find it very helpful in terms of the skills that I, I gained on the course. I felt like it was very much kind of geared towards a very male way of making music and a very a very specific dominant academic way of making music that I couldn't connect to as um as a way I don't know just like the way that I learned things felt like very different from the way that the course was um structured um I mean my impression was that you you basically have to teach yourself everything and be and not share anything about the way that you learn as well which I really tried to kind of invite conversations about how do, how do you approach like reverb or not or how do you use distortion that it's not too much but it like really technical questions around effects in electroacoustic music which 
um, which weren't really answered. I don't know. So, I, I mean, I really appreciate the goal setting. I appreciate the people that I met. I've met like probably one of the best friends that I've met, like Guillaume Dusha, who's like really been supportive um, in, in showing me like some technical stuff that I wasn't really sure about and, and never made me feel silly for asking like technical questions which I really felt like on the course, like it wasn't even a conversation, like how do you do something um, wasn't really, um, it wasn't really like a thing you could ask. Um, so I don't know, that, that's my experience of it. Um, I know a lot of people probably be a bit disappointed to hear me say that, but um, yeah. Yeah, I, I don't know. So um, I think I think probably what it propelled me to do more than anything was like to push my own solo practice was to probably like experiment with technologies that I've not really, but actually maybe saying that is probably more friends like Dan Valentine, like who invited me to try stuff out more rather than people on the course, uh, the tutors on the course. Yeah, I don't know if that answers your question, Andy. Yeah, no, it does. It does, definitely. Thank you. <laughs> um, I think Delilah, you had a question. Hiya. Um, I may have I joined a bit late, so I you might have already covered this. So sorry in advance. <laughs> um, but I was just interested in the boundary or supposed boundary between sound art and music and somewhere in that mix performance because I feel like whenever I'm making any art that's to do with sound I feel like that I can't I really want to move into doing more musical things but I'm not a trained musician <laughs> and I don't know it seems like um, a boundary which is kind of for someone untrained uh somewhat uh I don't know scary and how you I don't know this isn't a proper question but how you allow yourself to play around with those things yeah thanks Delilah I yeah I totally I can totally understand I mean not totally I mean I, I can kind of I feel like I understand what you're saying and that um it's not really, what I do isn't really perceived as music, although in some contexts it is, but um, I guess I kind of go back to this sort of folk, idea of a folk tradition where you, you learn from the people that you're directly in connection with. So um, I had a good friend, Sophie, who played guitar I'd never played guitar before. I just picked it up and just like did a couple of notes. I still don't really know how to play guitar, but there's something, I think intuitively we have, we have like a, a need to express ourselves through various sonic means that could be through an instrument that's like accepted instrument in that it's, it has notes and a perceived kind of um, scale but then also um, there's all sorts of ways to like come into contact with those instruments and also voice to kind of explore what, what, what kind of physical emotional connection do you have with an instrument or your voice? And it's always been very much closely connected to community for me. Um, so I, um, I don't know if that really kind of answers your question. I don't, I, um, I mean, there's obviously the context of the art world and the music world. And I feel like it's quite, it, I, find, I find more so it's quite stifling to be in the music, associated with the music world in some senses, because I feel like people are a lot more self-critical and critical of others in that world. Whereas I feel like when I've partaken in things to do with the art world, in a different way, but it and, and it has issues, but I do feel there's like a freedom to explore or experiment in a very childlike way that maybe isn't possible in 
a conservatoire of music, like where you're, you know, there's very much like a perceived way of how you should sit with your instrument, how you should blow into your instrument. Whereas if you were in the art world, it would be like, what is this object? What am I doing? Like, what's this, you know, like more existential questions about like your interaction. Whereas with the music world, I feel like it's very much kind of, it feels, I mean, this is my, and, and this is why I didn't go to study music. So I'm maybe not the best person to, to kind of, um, you know, not that I'm going to be super critical of it, but I just don't feel like it's attained that level of experimentation of interaction, which I, I feel allowed to in more of an art context. Yeah, I hope that answers somehow, Delilah. Thanks, that's brilliant. Yeah, super interesting. Um, so PE says, uh, do you remember making your first piece? slash thing um oh probably probably with my friend sophie on guitar like i was saying like i'd never played guitar um and she she just taught me a couple of notes of like i think it was like bark because we were both really into bark i mean it's not like i shun music like i love music and i love musical traditions and there's so much to learn from a musical tradition but um you know they're, they're also up for grabs they're also up for being experimented with so I think that's probably that's probably the first thing I remember is that me and Sophie drinking a lot of wine and um her teaching me the kind of melody of the art of fugue which was like a bark piece that I totally totally really loved um and we just improvised and then it went quite punk and, you know, again, very much about this object that's like a thing and also all the kind of baggage that goes with it. You know, I'm a woman playing it. How should I play it? I'm not going to play it like quite how um, I, maybe I should or whatever. I don't know. Or play it that well. or I don't know. Just, um, yeah, quite punk. Love it. Um, OK, I think Leah says she has a comment and many questions. Oh. Um, great. Um, we've got, I'd say, I'd say max five minutes. So see how many, see how many questions you can get in. Oh, can't, can't hear you very well, Leah. Sorry, can you hear me okay. now? Yeah. Yeah. Sorry about that. Um, my comment is just that I found, I find it really impressive how you appear to have managed to bring together so many of the, the strands of things in life, which are important to you into your creative practice. And that's something that I really want to uh, work towards and, and what I'm really thinking about at the moment. So, so yeah, I mean, thank you for, for sharing um, so richly all of the things that come into your creativity. Um, so I'm one of those really uptight conservatoire trained musicians. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> like, like off the, off the scale. Oh. So I, I play medieval harp. Oh, wow. And, but that's amazing. And, and have studied it. You know, I, I too was at Manchester University, but many, many years ago. Wow. And off to Switzerland to study it. Anyway, um, as you can imagine, uh, technology somewhat scares me in as much as I, <laughs> I play medieval music. Um, but one of the things that I want to bring more into my practice is that I'm a pilgrim. I do a lot of walking. I'm really interested in the ways that we can heal through connecting with uh, the land outside. Um, also mm -hmm. through connecting through music, that seems important. So, you know, I'm trying to integrate these things together. And I've been wondering about how I might be able to bring the outside world in for people who perhaps can't experience the outside world. Um, and an idea would be to record it but I literally have no idea where to begin so mm. I was really interested in that course that you mentioned but if there was one piece of equipment or one piece of software that would help me start a journey I hope this isn't like a very boring question for everyone if you're all like <laughs> super techno files and know what you're doing but just if there was one thing that you would recommend to a total beginner who's willing to have a go and, and you know experiment a bit what what might that be? uh probably like a zoom as simple as that yeah like a zoom and um to get started on 
like there's a really good free software that you can access online called Reaper. Reaper. Um, which you can either donate like $40 or you can um, just download for free. I mean, and I like, I mean, there's Zooms, but I, I also use my iPhone. Like if there's like a moment or like a sound, uh, like just to capture it um, on that and just to kind of experiment. There's lots and lots of good resources on YouTube um, for Reaper, like. Excellent, I, d I must admit, I've never heard of that. I have a Zoom, which, you know, as a, a nice uptight classical musician, I've recorded my concerts with as hey. one does. Oh, it sounds <laughs> to amazing. Listen to, to listen back to them and criticize myself. Oh, oh no. <laughs> oh, get a rock, get a rock. I love your rocks. Yeah, they're good. I've got a lot more of them here. This is just this. Thanks uh, yeah. so much. Really yeah, really yeah. And like the you. pilgrim, like the I don't know, like if you sing, like I can just imagine you on your path. Oh, um, I do. <laughs> like that that would be that would be so amazing to just like yeah. vocalize or or chat. I, you know, I like also, a bit of a stream of consciousness as I, well. I like, I, I'd like, I like the idea of getting more people to do that because I think it yeah. could be such a, a, a beautiful, like, obviously not quite the right moment, but also it, it has come out of the experience of being locked down, you know? Yeah. So, nice creative thoughts, hopefully. Definitely, definitely, definitely. Yeah. And like just combining like some of your instrument sounds with maybe some of your experiences outside. And like what you can do is Reaper is just like, maybe, you know, like very randomly, just like layer them up. So you've got a line of your voice, thoughts, some sounds, I don't know. And then, I mean, you can go deeper into kind of editing and cutting things up. Um, and I'm sure, you know, like Yorkshire Sound Women Network kind of offer workshops to do with that. and. And there's lots of resources online. Um, is it pretty intuitive? Um, it, or do I, I mean, need to watch those videos? You could also just go in and just like drag them in. Yeah, I mean, like, um, it's just like trying to navigate some stuff. I think, um, I mean, I think in terms of intuitive technologies, my, my primary one to go to would be Ableton because I find like, that very very quick and easy to use reaper is free but you you probably need you, you you need to kind of get an awareness of where menus are to kind of access like things um thanks ever so much i mean that's a massive leap forward for me mm, it sounds really exciting i look forward to hearing what you come up with yeah sounds super exciting um stanthy's got a really quick question Hi, sorry, just so I could squeeze it in, just I don't want to run out of time. I was just going to ask um, what uh, plugins you use on Ableton that you find uh, create the best sounds or you that can manipulate the sounds best with? Sure, yeah. Um, so, I mean, like, I'm, I feel like very simple kind of thing. So quite often rather than plugins, I mean, I do use like GRM. Um, that's kind of probably my go-to bundle, but um, in terms of working into recordings that I've made, I just use um, the kind of things that are already in Ableton. So like slowing things down, pitch bending. Um, there's lots of things that you can do to the sample itself, um, which I, I find like really, really quite satisfying. Um, I'm probably, I mean, I feel like I use quite simple things, but it's usually about layering or like mixing in between some kind of subtle effect. I don't know if that answers your question, but you know, you in Ableton, you can kind of go into the sample itself and you have like lots of options of transposition and, um, uh, like how you can affect the sound with relation to beats or, transients yeah the, the that I find you can get a lot of really satisfying kind of sounds from I'm really stretching it stretching it stretching it as far as you can um 
and then kind of juxtaposing that with sounds that are very, very unaffected. Um, maybe some EQ. Um, okay, yeah, that's really helpful. Thank you for that. Cool, thanks. Thanks everyone for your questions. They're really brilliant. I feel like we could just discuss this for a lot longer. Um, I just want to say a few couple of things before we um, go to the nice meditation uh, section at the end. Um, firstly, massive thank you to Kelly, like all your insight and oh yeah, some clappy hands there. Yeah, really super interesting. Um, and uh, I would personally recommend checking out Kelly's um, newest album. Um, it's it's incredible. And the film is that available, Kelly, somewhere? It's not. Re it's not. Okay. But I can just send you a link. I can send you a link to the record and the film. Like, um, if I share that with you guys, um, Jess, and then you can maybe pass that on to everyone. Yeah, I think. Um, well, um, I was going to say. Um, We'll we'll send around an, an email, kind of a follow up with some feedback, and and within that, um, hopefully include some of the links because um, yeah, I feel like we've been sharing or talking about a lot of really interesting um, people and web pages and films. So hopefully, um, maybe we can get together and um, get some of the links in the email. Um, and yeah, finally, um, Friday, Feb the 19th is the next seminar. So get that in the diary. Um, and that's with Mariam Rezai. Um, so that's going to be a good one. Uh, a nice Friday, Friday seminar. Um, and yeah, that's all from, from me. Thanks so much, everyone, for being here and your brilliant questions. Um, and for those of you that, that want to stay for the meditation, brilliant. Um, and as Kelly said, if you want to start the meditation and kind of drift out, that's also fine. Um, I'm going to hand back over to Kelly. Cool. Thanks, Jess. So it's the link that I sent right at the start of the chat. Like, hopefully you might have downloaded it by now. If not, like, um, I'll just share it again, maybe. I'm sorry, that's the YouTube video. Um, um, So if you didn't download already, here it is. Um, it's just over 11 minutes long. Uh, turn off your sound, turn off your video, lie down. Um, and just, yeah, just kind of all the things that we've been talking about. Maybe just tune into your body. Take a nice deep breath. Um, maybe just kind of check in with your emotions. Um, and just just in just enjoy yeah um and i'll be here at the end um in like 11 minutes time and we can if you have any final comments reflections thoughts whatever like we can just check in again um if not if you just decide to go into a little chill zone just do that <laughs> um yeah thanks thanks for everyone for check for um tuning in <laughs> <laughs> thank you thanks okay so i'll just count down three two one cool, cool. thank you yeah if there's any any kind of final questions reflections thoughts very very happy to to continue chatting for a bit mm, i really needed that space we've been doing zooms all day and that was just perfect oh good i'm glad, I'm glad jess and there's yes. some instructions again like we'll get together and just like i'll put together a, a list of some of those connect links and things that i've mentioned and i can also attach um yeah so you've downloaded it and you can go back to that again and again and again if and when needed amazing i definitely will um Okay, lovely. I think we'll we'll wrap it up there. And um, thank you so much. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, thanks everyone thank for you. sticking around. Yeah, um, definitely. And um, hopefully see uh, see some people on on the next um, next seminar Friday, Feb the nineteenth. Um, we'll send info round in the email. Um, 
great cool have a really Thanks, nice everyone. beautiful evening everyone